Okay, Tim, I give you my mic. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for the organizers. This is Tin Tan from LPNHE. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Sorbonne University, and I'm also working in the Lemma Alpha Analysis Group in the DESI collaboration. Today, I'd like to talk about the detection of the damp lemma alpha systems in quasar spectra with uh, machine learning algorithms. I would like to give a status report of our current study. First, let me quickly introduce what is lemma alpha forest. Uh, the lemma alpha forest is the absorption lines uh, in the quasar spectra caused by the lemma alpha transitions. Uh, caused by the neutrogen hydrogen densities along the line of sight. Here is an example of the lemma alpha forest in the quasar spectra. Uh, in the lemma alpha forest, there are some very strong absorption regions caused by the neutral hydrogen densities with very high column densities, UNI larger than 10 to the 20, and those are called DLAs. People usually use vote profile fitting to model those DLAs. Um, as is known, lemma alpha forest can be used as a biased matter tracer to detect the barrier acoustic oscillation signal in the early universe, and DLAs play a very important role in the lemma alpha BAO analysis, so it is very needed to have a good, very good DLA catalog. People have adapted many machine learning uh, algorithms to detect DLAs, uh, however, they have some limitations. Uh, seen from the upper plot, the upper plot shows the previous thing algorithm working on lemma alpha mocks, uh, it is shown that the purity and efficiency for most of the data samples are below 95%, and especially for the DLAs with no column densities. So uh, it means that the algorithm fails to detect a large amount of DLAs. And there exists disagreement between different algorithms. Uh, for the same SDSS DR16 data release, uh, the Gaussian processes and the CNNs fail to establish the same DLA catalog. It, uh, in this case, it is very hard for us to trust the catalog that we detect. In our research, uh, we are using several different things to, de to do, the, uh, do the DLA classification, redshift, and common density estimation separately. Uh, in this case, we can optimize those things uh, in each case to get the best performance. For an input uh, query that spectra, uh, we first use a sliding window to cut that into many pieces. For each piece, we use a uh, one D thing to do the DLA classification. Uh, and the, the classification result is made by an uh, ensemble decision uh, of those many pieces. After we get a very good DLA catalog, uh, we can try to use other CNNs to do the redshift and um, column density estimation. And in order to get a statistical inference and uncertainties, we are trying to establish the bias in CNNs. Um, in this case, the weights transferred in between the layers are no longer numbers, but the uh, estimated distributions. Um, here follows the results of our current DLA classifications on the cyclic lemma alpha mocks. Um, we are working on the DLAs for column density larger than 20.3. Uh, you can see that for these six uh, data samples, uh, depending on signal to noise ratio and column densities, we are achieving a very good performance for uh, all of them. For the purity and completeness, they are all above 97%. This means that we can uh, already establish a very good DLA catalog and our next step is to uh, improve our ongoing Bayes sensing structure to do the redshift and uh, column density estimations. That is all, thank you.